In my prior video, I tested the TSX-60 stocks for defense during the great financial crash in 2008-2009, the sovereign debt crisis of 2011-2012, the oil crash on top of a China slowdown in 2014 and 2015, the US versus China trade war of 2018-2019, and of course the COVID-19 global sell-off of early 2020s. Essentially, the stocks that fell the least on average was how I determined which was the best across Canada and their own industries. But I felt like I didn't do my viewers justice last time in certain industries like real estate and healthcare, simply because there just weren't enough of those companies within the TSX 60. So this time I wanted to go one step further and run the data for all 225 Canadian stocks in the TSX composite. This will include other billion dollar companies that were previously missing like Empire, the owners of Sobeys, Fresh Coat and Farm Boy, Rio Can Reed, Maple Leaf Foods, Air Canada, Intact Insurance, and Quebecor. I've also broken it down by sub-industries to really find out what was working for defense. For for instance, in real estate, I break it down by retail, residential, office, industrial, healthcare, diversified, and services. And for mining, it's by gold, silver, copper, and royalties. From these subgroups, we can find the best companies in every area. I wanted to quickly mention that academically speaking, stocks in certain industries often have particular moments in time during an economic life cycle where they have better or worse performance. Since I'm only talking about a recessionary phase, typically stocks classified as utilities, consumer staples, and healthcare should be outperforming, while underperformance is more expected by real estate, industrials, information technology, and communication services. We'll see if this has occurred in recent major events in Canadian stock market history. So I created a long table of the TSX composite companies and how harshly each dropped during the bigger stock market sell for those that don't know, the TSX composite companies basically represent 70% of the Canadian market in terms of stock market capitalization. Practically any large Canadian company that you can think of on the stock market is likely part of the TSX composite. For simplicity, the sell-offs are strictly based on price changes during the specific periods and don't consider dividends received or any company-specific events going on. In case you wanted to play with the data yourself, I've also included a link to my Google Sheet for you to make a copy. Since there's too many companies on the list to show all at once, here are the top 5 companies in the TSX Composite for defense during each major event and their performance. When you average for all 5 events, here's the best companies and their average performance. Because some industries do better than others, let's check for the best company in each industry. For financials, when breaking down by sub-industry, there are banks, insurance, asset management, and service companies. Here's the list of companies from largest to smallest. Here's the same list organized by subcategory. For an easier view, here are the top three companies in the industry for defense during each major event, their performance, and the industry's average performance at the time. When you average for all five events, here's the best company, their average performance, and the industry's average performance. Here is a sub-industry breakdown of the industry, how well they did in each event, and the top stock that averaged the highest and lowest during the five periods. So my observation has changed from last time. Other financial companies like Thomson Reuters and TMX Group turned out to be the best for defense. Insurance turned out better than the banks. Last time there were only life insurance companies, but when you add in property and casualty insurance names like Fairfax and Intact, then average insurance results were much better. In contrast, for banks, we originally only had the big banks, but now we have smaller ones that didn't perform like Equitable and Canadian Western that made the group average lower. For energy, when breaking down by sub-industry, there are the integrateds, pipelines, producers, and refiners. Producers think about extraction, refiners make the energy usable, integrateds do both production and refining, and pipelines just think about delivering it. Here's the list of companies from largest to smallest. Here's the same list organized by subcategory. For an easier view, here are the top three companies in the industry for defense during each major event, their performance, and the industry's average performance at the time. When you average for all five events, here's the best company, their average performance, and the industry's average performance. Here is a sub-industry breakdown of the industry, how well they did in each event, and the top stock that averaged the highest and lowest during the five periods. There was only one refiner, so I didn't make a group for it. So the observation I made last time was the same. The energy industry lost a lot of money in every period, but the pipelines are consistently the best way for defense. They were almost 20% better on average compared to the other categories. 
for utilities, when breaking down by sub-industry, it's either regulated utilities or independent power producers. Normally, a utility company generates electricity and owns the transmission lines to deliver to customers. Regulated utilities have oversight from a public regulator on what they can do, especially with how much they can charge customers. By the same time, they have no local competition. Quite the opposite, independent power producers have others compete in their market of operation. Thus, the prices that they can charge are often competition-based. This is an industry that's set to outperform during a recessionary phase. Here's a list of companies from largest to smallest. Here's the same list organized by subcategory. So I switched Brookfield infrastructure to utilities from industrials, since it turned out that a bigger part of their business is now classified as utilities. For an easier view, here are the top three companies in the industry for defense during each major event, their performance, and the industry's average performance at the time. When you average for all five events, here's the best company, their average performance, and the industry's average performance. Here is a sub-industry breakdown of the industry, how well they did in each event, and the top stock that averaged the highest and lowest during the five periods. So the observation I made last time has changed. The industry wasn't exactly immune to losses, so outperformance would be on the company level. Also, there wasn't a really big difference in performance between the two subcategories. What I did notice was that utilities was the only industry where the bigger the company, the better the average performance. For communications, when breaking down by sub-industry, there are the telecom and media companies. Many telecoms have a media department, but telecom services is still the bigger driver of their business. Telecom services would include wireless phone plans, as well as wireline, which is cable TV, home internet, and landline phones. This is an industry that's said to not perform during a recessionary phase. Although I personally find that mobile phones and home internet are becoming essentials in the 21st century. Here's a list of companies from largest to smallest. For an easier view, here are the top three companies in the industry for defense during each major event, their performance, and the industry's average performance at the time. When you average for all five events, here's the best company, their average performance, and the industry's average performance. Here is a sub-industry breakdown of the industry, how well they did in each event, and the top stock that averaged the highest and lowest during the five periods. So the observation I made last time was the same. The industry wasn't exactly immune, but the industry wasn't an underperformer, and it did better than utilities, which is supposed to be an outperformer. From a defensive angle, sticking with the big two, BCE and Rogers, did well, but also smaller names like Quebecor and Kajika would have done well too. For industrials, when breaking down by sub-industry, there are various groups including aerospace, business services, construction, transportation, and waste management, to name a few. This is an industry that's said to not perform during a recessionary phase. Here's a list of companies from largest to smallest. Here's the same list organized by subcategory. For an easier view, here are the top three companies in the industry for defense during each major event, their performance, and the industry's average performance at the time. When you average for all five events, here's the best company, their average performance, and the industry's average performance. Here's a sub-industry breakdown of the industry, how well they did in each event, and the top stock that averaged the highest and lowest during the five periods. So the observation I made last time was the same. The industry didn't perform and on average lost money in all periods. What's new is that business services and construction companies tend to fare much better on the downside, following on average 10-15% to less than other categories. Interestingly, the extent of the losses of the industry was on par with financial. Although on a case-by-case -case basis at the company level, industrial losses were noticeably wider. For materials, when breaking down by sub-industry, there are various groups including forest products, royalties, and mining companies specific to gold, silver, copper, and other minerals. Mining companies are those interested in the extraction of resources, and the royalties own a small portion of the resource without dealing with the operations of mining. Here's a list of companies from largest to smallest. Here's the same list organized by subcategory. For an easier view, here are the top three companies in the industry for defense during each major event, their performance, and the industry's average performance at the time. When you average for all five events, here's the best company, their average performance, and the industry's average performance. Here's a sub-industry breakdown of the industry, how well they did in each event, and the top stock that averaged the highest and lowest during the five periods. So the observation I made last time was the same. Royalties were the best group for defense. But what's new and doesn't come as a surprise is that for mining, gold was the best and was on average 15-20% to better than the other mining categories. Interestingly, the extent of the losses for the industry was on par with financials. For technology, when breaking down by sub-industry, it's either software or hardware companies, but for the majority, it's actually just software. 
This is an industry that's said to not perform during a recessionary phase. Here's a list of companies from largest to smallest. For an easier view, here are the top three companies in the industry for defense during each major event, their performance, and the industry's average performance at the time. When you average for all five events, here's the best company, their average performance, and the industry's average performance. Here is a sub-industry breakdown of the industry, how well they did in each event, and the top stock that averaged the highest and lowest during the five periods. There was only one hardware company, so I didn't make a group for it. So the observation I made last time was the same. Constellation Software was the best, and the industry wasn't that bad. In fact, it actually performed better than most industries. For consumer at a high level, they're either classified as consumer staple or consumer discretionary stocks. Staples would imply essential, while discretionary is just non-essential businesses. When breaking down by sub-industry, staples can either be groceries, consumer packaged goods, retail defensive, and non-alcoholic beverages. Likewise, discretionary sub-industries include vehicle parts, personal services, packaging and containers, apparel, and restaurants, to name a few. Let's talk staples first. Consumer staples is an industry that's said to outperform during a recessionary phase. Here's a list of companies from largest to smallest. Here is the same list organized by subcategory. For an easier view, here are the top three companies in the industry for defense during each major event, their performance, and the industry's average performance at the time. When you average for all five events, here's the best company, their average performance, and the industry's average performance. Now let's talk about the discretionary companies. Here is a list of companies from largest to smallest. Here is the same list organized by subcategory. For an easier view, here are the top three companies in the industry for defense during each major event, their performance, and the industry's average performance at the time. When you average for all five events, here's the best company, their average performance, and the industry's average performance. Here is a sub-industry breakdown of the industry, how well they did in each event, and the top stock that averaged the highest and lowest during the five periods. So for the most part, my original observations were the same. Amongst the entire consumer industry, retail defensive names averaged the highest and made more money. But when it came to actual downside losses, the groceries lost less. When including staple candidates that weren't in the TSX60, like Sobeys and Maple Leaf Foods, it didn't change the first place position by Metro. Amongst discretionary names, packaging and container companies like Winpack were a better spot to play defense. In fact, you'll find some names in that sub-industry that did better than some in staples. But overall, consumer staples on average did 20% better than consumer discretionary. For real estate, when breaking down by sub-industry, there are real estate services and REITs classified as retail, office, residential, healthcare, industrial, and diversified. This is an industry that's said to not perform during a recessionary phase. Here's a list of companies from largest to smallest. Here is the same list organized by subcategory. For an easier view, here are the top three companies in the industry for defense during each major event, their performance, and the industry's average performance at the time. When you average for all five events, here's the best company, their average performance, and the industry's average performance. Here is a sub-industry breakdown of the industry, how well they did in each event, and the top stock that averaged the highest and lowest during the five periods. So from my observation, although the real estate industry didn't perform as expected, it on average did better than financials. Residential and retail REITs were the best on average. Interestingly, industrial REITs weren't around for the first two crashes, but based on the recent events, I don't think it would have done better than the first two categories. Ironically, diversified REITs didn't really get the benefits of protection through diversification, as its name would imply. For healthcare, when breaking down by sub-industry, there are biotechnology, cannabis, drug manufacturers, and healthcare services. This is an industry that's set to outperform during a recessionary phase. Here's a list of companies from largest to smallest. Here is the same list organized by subcategory. For an easier view, here are the top three companies in the industry for defense during each major event, their performance, and the industry's average performance at the time. When you average for all five events, here's the best company, their average performance, and the industry's average performance. Here is a sub-industry breakdown of the industry, how well they did in each event, and the top stock that averaged the highest and lowest during the five periods. So from my observation, although the industry is supposed to outperform, I don't think it has. But at the same time, outperformance is very company specific, and it's really hard to make a general opinion for the entire industry and how it does during specific market sell-offs. So now let's see how all Canadian industries compare to each other side by side. So here's a table showing all major industries in the TSX composite side by side for all events, as well as the best and worst stocks for each. For top comparison purposes, I'm going to exclude healthcare since I believe companies there should be viewed on a case by case basis, and they aren't consistent as a collective industry. Here are the top 3 industries for defense during each major event, 
their performance, and the TSX Composite's market performance. When you average for all five events, here's the best industries and their average performance. Now let's dig deeper and see how sub-industries compare to each other. To really figure out the best stocks, here's all the sub-industries side by side for all events with the best and worst stocks for each. Again, for comparison purposes, I've excluded healthcare companies for the exact same reason. Here's the top three sub-industries during each major market event, their performance, and the TSX Composites market performance. When you average for all five events, here's the best sub-industries and their average performance. So that's all for now. There was a lot of work involved for this video, so if you enjoyed or learned a lot, remember to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications for investment ideas in the future. Let me know in the comments below what Canadian stocks you're investing in for defense, and I'll see you next time.